Okay, please let's continue. Apologies for that interruption. I found out that my comments were not uh, being transmitted and I thought it wasn't uh, appropriate to just be talking and not getting questions or clarifications. But apologies for that, okay? So let's quickly sweep on to uh, immunity, okay? Which is, we said, we started in the beginning by saying that the defense systems involve phagocytosis that is this part about by the, um, the white blood cells and the reticulated system. And then secondly, by the formation of um, antibodies, and, okay? And uh, the destruction of these invaders by lymphocytes, okay? And then we said, uh, when we came to lymphocytes, we said they are, they are the key players of the immune system, okay? So here we are talking about immunity, which is the ability of the body to resist microorganisms and toxins that may damage tissues or organs, okay? So we're talking about immunity, the ability of the body to resist micro, various microorganisms and toxins that may damage what tissues or organs. And we have two types of immunity. We have what the innate immunity, and we have what the, the acquired immunity. Okay, so when we talk about innate immunity, we are talking about natural immunity. Okay, we just are that one you are born with, it's inborn, it's inherent in you. Okay, and it's produced by the natural resistance of the skin, for example, your skin. And so, for those of you who are sometimes, I mean, let, not, let me not be derogatory, trying to bleach off your skin, you're, you're, you're tampering with your, of, of destroying, you know, of destroying the the skin's uh, structure which which imbued in it is the ability to fight uh, uh, bacteria and other invaders by white blood cells tissue in the, the tissue macrophage system and natural killer cells okay we are talking about the innate immunity the uh, the, the different system of your body at uh, in which you are born with okay and then we also have destruction of many swallowed microorganisms by the hydrochloric acid. We also have presence of certain chemical compounds in the blood that attack and destroy foreign organisms like lysozymes. Then we also have uh, uh, the, the bactericidal agents in, like, in, in tears, okay, in tears, okay. We have the, the mucoescalatory uh, systems or system in the respiratory tract that is able to beat out uh, and, and yeah. So we have a plethora of um, of systems within the body that we are born with that helps to ward off invading microorganisms. Okay. So the third assignment which I'm giving to you is list. Okay. List ten. Okay. mechanism so to speak or oh, yeah 10 ways by which the body fights uh, in invading microorganisms by the natural innate or by the innate immune uh, mechanism okay by the innate immune mechanism so we have acquired immunity what we call the adaptive immunity and so this is the development of the immune response against a foreign organism or toxins once they enter the cells or once they enter the body. Okay. So when the when a, when a microorganism, when a, when an invader yeah, or an, an invading agent invades the, the system, this the, the system develops an immune response to fight against what this organism or against this toxin. Okay. And uh, this the, the basic constituent of this immune system. Are the lymphocytes okay and the immune response of course by activation of these cells to attack the invaders so the immune system is activated to attack these invaders okay the immune system is activated to attack these invaders okay and so the invaders are called antigens okay and they are attacked directly or by Attacking the real true forming of antibodies, so you have uh, you have um, antigens which are the invaders, and these invaders can be attacked directly by the lymphocytes, or they can be attacked indirectly by the lymphocytes, forming what forming uh, antibodies. Okay, 
most most antigenic substance, it's not the whole in, invading microorganism that is that is involved in the immune reaction. There are segments, there are portions, there are chemical molecules of these microorganisms that act as that 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 have antigenic property. Okay, so many antigenic substances are either proteins or polysaccharides. Okay. But of course, antibodies can be formed against nucleic acids or lipids if they are presented as nucleoproteins or hyperproteins. So most of the antigenic substances are what uh, 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 proteins or what polypeptides. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are polypeptides or what are proteins or polysaccharides okay and so but then antibodies can be formed against nucleic acids or lipids if they are presented as nucleoproteins or lipoproteins okay normally the immune system does not attack its own body tissues okay this one called immune tolerance or what self tolerance okay immune tolerance or what self tolerance however sometimes such tolerance fails and an immune response develops against what? Against the body's own tissues, okay? Resulting in what we call autoimmune diseases, okay? These are diseases that result as a, that come about as a result of the body developing uh, antibodies against its own tissues, okay? So the body views a part of itself as foreign and develops antibodies against it to fight against it. Okay, we, when we talked about neuromuscular junction, we talked about myasthenia gravis, isn't it? Which was an autoimmune disease in which uh, antibodies against the nicotinic receptors in the neuromuscular junction are developed and they attack the receptors and destroy the receptors, impeding on what? Neurotransmission, neuromuscular transmission. Even uh, also, it is a uh, Some people look at type 1 diabetes, okay, to be, to be a form of an autoimmune disease, okay, so we, we, we have that, okay, we also osteoarthritis, okay, so we have several forms of uh, immune, autoimmune disease, there are many of them, okay, so let's look at quickly the, 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 the components of the immune system, talk about the lymphocytes, okay? And these lymphocytes, uh, the lymphocyte precursors are derived from the bone marrow, okay? And then they are, when they, they, they leave the bone marrow, they are transferred to, um, to certain organs where they are processed, okay? So these this, this precursors, they are processed in different organs where they can be, come mature, okay? Then from there, they then migrate to lymphoid organs, okay? Remember we mentioned about the limb, the, the spleen, and the lymph nodes, okay? These are examples of lymphoid organs. So the, the, pre, the precursors of the lymphocytes leave the bone marrow, they are processed in, in certain organs, and then they are, they now migrate to lymphoid organ, okay? So uh, where are they processed? Now, for example, the lymph, for side precursors that are processed in the lymph in the in the thymus gland, the the the, the lymphocytes that are processed in the thymus gland are, are called the T lymphocytes. Please follow me, Kindly Lucas. I want to think so, okay? But then uh, because uh, the Taiwan diabetes is as a result of what ablation or uh the destruction of what the beta cells okay so it's um it's, it's it can be seen that way okay it can be seen that way in which the taiwan the beta cells of the islands of langehans are destroyed leading to what uh deficient insulin production okay so i think i i, I won't be wrong but you can confirm okay so uh so we have we, we are talking about lymphocytes, and they say the, the precursors of these lymphocytes are, 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 are in the bone marrow, mm. and, um, and so they, they are processed, they are made mature uh, in certain organs, okay? They are made mature in certain organs, 
And uh, one of those organs is the thymus. Okay, the thymus is, a, is an endocrine organ that is present uh, in on the heart, so to speak. And so this this lymphocytes that are processed in the thymus gland are called T lymphocytes. Okay, and these T lymphocytes further differentiate into various types of cells. So the first types of cells in which these T lymphocytes differentiate to what the, the helper T cells. Okay, the helper T cells. Helper T cells. Uh, Chibwe Chenakila, please. Uh, this, this forum is not a joking forum. Okay, so be serious or I sound friendly. So we have the helper T cells. Okay. The helper T cells are also called the CD4 cells. What is the meaning of CD? Clusters of differentiation. Okay, the CD4 cells, clusters of differentiation. So the helper T cells or the CD4 T cells, okay, because present on their surface is a glycoprotein protein called CD4. Okay, present on their surface is a um, a, gly a glycoprotein called CD4, okay? And so this, we have two types of helper T cells. We have the helper one T cells and the helper two T cells. Or we can say the T helper one cells and the T helper two cells. We'll see them shortly if we reach them today. Then the T lymphocytes can further also differentiate into what we call the CD8 T cells or the cytotoxic T cells, okay? Because they are present on their cell surface are uh, CD8 glycoprotein molecules. Okay. Then we also have the T suppressor cells. Okay, we have the T suppressor cells. Okay, and then we have the T memory cells. Okay, the T memory cells. Some books call it what the silent cytotoxic T cells. So the T cells differentiate, to my understanding, into the helper T cells or the T4 cells or the CD4 T cells which further differentiate into the T helper 1 cells and the T helper 2 cells, and these cells, then the T suppressor cells and what, the T memory cells, okay? Then the, the lymphocyte precursors can also be processed, okay? Then the, the, the lymphocyte precursors can also be processed in, in, another, in uh, the bone marrow, and um, and the liver, so to speak, okay, and then the to give us what we call the B lymphocytes. I'll, I'll explain that keenly, but then uh, some of me. So we have the the T cytotoxic cytotoxic cells. We have the T suppressor cells. And then we have the T memory cells, okay? Not forgetting what the T helper, which I had mentioned. Okay. So we have the, 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 they are called T lymphocytes because they are processed, they mature in the thymus gland, the thymus gland. And then the B cells, the, okay, uh, more, Kowani, the silent cytotoxic cells are the T memory cells, okay? The T memory cells, T memory, okay? So this, the B cells are called B cells because they are processed in what we call the bursa or fabricus equivalent in humans, okay? Bursa or fabricus, or fabricus. Now, this bursa of fabricus is found in birds, okay? It's found in birds close to the cloaca, okay? Now, so in birds, the, the lymphocytes are processed in the bursa of fabricus, and that's why they are called B lymphocytes. But in humans, we do not have the bursa of fabricus, but we have the equivalent, which is the liver in fetus and the bone marrow in adults, okay? So in the fetus, the bees, the, 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 the lymphocytes, that are processed in the liver mature into B, into B lymphocytes, while in adults, when they are processed, they are processed in the bone marrow and they mature into what? Into 
B lymphocytes, okay? And the B lymphocytes further differentiate into plasma cells and what? The memory B cells, okay? So the B lymphocytes, which are processed in the bursa of fabricus, okay? The bursa of fabricus, okay? Which is, 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 is an organ found in the cloaca near, it's a lymphoid structure near the cloaca of, in birds. But in humans, we do not have the bursa of fabricus. But we have its equivalent. Okay, so we have the liver in fetus and the what and the and the and the bone marrow in 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 in, in adults. Okay, in adults. Okay, and so the B lymphocytes differentiate into B memory cells and the plasma cells. Okay, and it's from these plasma cells that we, that immunoglobulins are formed. Okay, it is these plasma cells that immunoglobulins are what are produced okay so both the t and the b lymphocytes are morphologically similar they are structurally similar but they can be identified by certain markers on their what on their cell membranes okay and the number of antigens that can be recognized by lymphocyte is extremely large that means there's a large array of antigens that can be recognized by by lymphocytes. And so we have many millions or million different types of B and T lymphocytes with each with the ability to what to respond to a particular antigen. So we have millions of B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Millions. Okay. So each with a specific ability to recognize and react to what a specific one. Um, a specific antigen okay so the so remember we said we had the memory t cells and the memory b cells okay and this i would say they are silent cytotoxic t cells for, 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 for the t cells and so they are inactive and they persist in the body for months years or even lifelong okay in case of measles okay that's what you when that's that's is on the basis of this that we begin to understand things about immunization and things and vaccines okay so these b memory cells and t memory cells they are inactive and they persist in the body for months years and even for life okay however these cells are converted to effector lymphocytes by an exposure a later exposure to the same antigen that have caused their formation. Remember this, this they are formed in response to the in entry of an antigen in the body. Okay, so this memory, these cells, this B, um, the, the, the provoke, the provoke, okay, the antigen that provokes when they are later exposed to the same antigen that caused their formation. Okay, in which case the, the response is greater and accelerated. That's what we call the secondary response. Okay, the second response. Okay, let's quickly look at a component which is uh, which is in between for us to understand something later. What called a major histocompatibility complex. Okay, major histocompatibility complex. Okay, the major histocompatibility complex. Okay, now. You read books, you call it MHC, major histocompatibility complex. Okay, these are special genes that are located on the short arm of chromosome six. Okay, there are special genes that are located on the short arm of chromosome six. Okay, and they code the formation of certain glycoproteins called what? Major histocompatibility proteins, MHC proteins. Okay, so they code, they, they encode formation of certain glycoproteins called what? the HMHC proteins or HMHC antigens, okay? And so they are also called what? The human leukocyte antigen, human leukocyte antigen, okay? Human leukocyte antigen, okay? So we have two types of these proteins. The HMHC proteins are formed from where they are, they are encoded, okay? They are formed from the, the, the machinery or the directive of the MHC genes that are located where on the short arm of the chromosome six. So these genes have information for the production of uh, certain glycoproteins 
called HMHC proteins, okay? And we have two types of HMHC proteins. We have a HMHC1 and HMHC2, okay? We have HMHC1 and HMHC2, okay? And they are distributed in several cells in the body, okay? The, the antigen-presenting cells contain both types of proteins, while all other cells of the body contain only HMHC1, okay? The antigen-presenting cells, We'll look at that. The antigen presenting cells contain both types of proteins, HC, uh, one and two proteins, while all other body cell types contain only MSC1. What are these HBHC proteins? They are, anti, they are human glucoside antigens. Okay. And we'll come to that uh, later on. Okay. So let's look at types of acquired immunity. We have two types of acquired immunity. We have the humoral immunity and we have the cellular immunity. We have the humoral immunity and the cellular immunity. The humoral immunity is mediated by the B lymphocytes, while the cellular immunity is mediated by the T lymphocytes. The humoral immunity is mediated by the B lymphocytes, while the cellular immunity is mediated by what the T lymphocytes. We are talking about types of acquired immunity. And we say we have two types, the humoral and the cellular. Okay. The humoral is mediated by the B lymphocyte, while the cellular is mediated by what the T lymphocyte. Okay, so let's look at the humoral immunity or the B cell immunity. Okay, so this is produced by the B lymphocytes. Okay, and it's a major defense against bacterial infections. Okay, this is produced by the B lymphocytes, and it's a major defense. Uh, against what bacterial infections okay so when these cells are activated by the antigens they proliferate and differentiate into plasma cells and memory b cells okay so when these cells are activated by the bacteria by the invading microorganism they proliferate they multiply they divide they multiply and then they differentiate into what the plasma cells and the b memory cells okay the plasma cells secrete antibodies called immunoglobulins into the lymph, okay? So these immunoglobulins are produced from the plasma cells. And what are the plasma cells? They are in the lymphoid organs, isn't it? Okay, and so this, these immunoglobulins are produced by the plasma cells and secreted into the lymph, which passes into the bloodstream and circulate where? In the globulin fraction of the plasma proteins. Can we still remember all plasma proteins are, are synthesized and produced from the liver, except what? Gamma globulins. And where are the gamma globulins formed? They are formed from what? From the plasma cells in the lymphoid tissues. Okay, so this is how they are formed. Okay, this is how they are formed. So when that invading microorganism bacteria enters, it activates the, the B lymphocytes. Okay, and then this proliferate into what? And differentiate into plasma cells and B memory cells. The B memory cells keep a memory of this invader in the, in the globulin fraction of the plasma proteins and then attack the invading antigen. And how, what is the mechanism of humoral immunity? Please, everybody pay keen attention here. What is the mechanism of humoral immunity? I'll ask you one way or the other. Okay, I think I, think I asked this question last year. So I'm mistaken, I'm not mistaken. Okay, so what is the mechanism of humoral immunity? Okay, now the B cells can be stimulated to secrete immunoglobulins by direct contact with the antigens. Okay, so the B cells can be stimulated to produce what immunoglobulins by direct contact with the antigens, just as we stated just before. However, contact with helper two, helper two T cells is essential for their full activity. So the B cells require the T helper two cells. Okay. T helper two cells. So the next function, the next assignment, please differentiate between helper T helper one cells and T helper two cells. It's quite keen. Uh, please, and I always advise that don't just look for a textbook. I think I was marking somebody's assignment today. He just lifted something from the textbook, which is basically what I gave you in class. Okay. So if I give you, if you give me quickly what I gave you, it doesn't make sense. Okay. So the the B lymphocytes require 
activation or contact with uh, helper two T cells for full activity. And how does it occur? Listen, Kinley, please. Antigens are engulfed by the antigen presenting cells. Now, please listen. When an antigen enters the body, they are picked up by what antigen presenting cells. So they, they engulf the, these antigen presenting cells, engulf the antigen, break the antigen, and present the antigenic molecules on their surface on those MHC proteins. Okay, so these antigen presenting cells, which are mainly macrophages and dendritic cells. Listen, I'll take this part slowly and over and over again. Okay, so the B lymphocytes can be stimulated. Okay, they can be stimulated directly to produce immunoglobulins. The B lymphocytes can be stimulated directly to produce immunoglobulins. Or BERT, let me use the word BERT. They are in contact with T helper 2 cells uh, per medium to act, to act maximally. Okay, it's essential, it's essential for one full activity. So, how does it happen? Antigens enter the body and are engulfed by the antigen presenting cells. Okay, and example, examples of antigen presenting cells are macrophages and dendritic cells. These dendritic cells are present all over the body, especially in the spleen, the lymph node, and the skin. Okay, so the dendritic cells are present all over the body, especially in the skin, the lymph node, and the spleen. So when the antigen enters, they are picked up, they are engulfed by what antigen presenting cells. And examples of antigen presenting cells are what? Microphages and what? Dendritic cells. So in the antigen presenting cells, the peptide products of the antigen digestion are now coupled to the HMHC2, okay, proteins and are presented on the cell surface. Now, so we talked, we spoke about the major histocompatibility complex. And I said the major histocompatibility complex two proteins are present on the antigen presenting cells. That means both types, MHC1 and 2, are present on the antigen presenting cells, while MHC1 only is present in other body cells. So when the antigen presenting cells engulf the antigen, digest the antigen, it now presents it, its antigenic molecules, the, 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 the proteins, okay, on these uh, MHC2 proteins. Okay, so as the as these antigenic molecules from are presented on the MHC2, okay, the APC cells now come in contact, or the, 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 the helper two cells now come in contact with the APC cells. Okay, the T helper two cells now come in contact with what? With the APC cells. And at specific antigen T cell receptors. An immune synapse is formed between the helper T cell and the APC cell. Between the helper T2 cell and the immune synapse is formed between the two types of cells. And this, this is established through cell adhesion proteins. Okay. So this process activates the helper T2 cells. So the binding of the helper T2 cells. <coughs> To the, to the APC cell via the antigen T cell receptor activates what? Activates the T helper 2 cells. The activation of the T helper 2 cells leads to the secretion of certain cytokines mm, or lymphokines. Okay? And these lymphokines have interleukins. Okay? So they the, the binding of the helper T2 cell to the APC cell via the antigen T cell receptor leads to the activation of the helper T2 cell and stimulates and stimulates them to secrete certain cytokines called what interleukins. So the the uh, chilufia the um, Helper T2 cell binds to the APC cell 
via an antigen T cell receptor, okay, via an antigen T cell receptor. And by so doing, this is done by the help of at the cell adhesion proteins, okay, cell adhesion proteins, okay. And this leads to an, an immune synapse, so to speak, an immune synapse. And this interaction activates the helper T2 cells. Okay, when they are activated, okay, the, the, the helper T2 cells are stimulated to produce uh, chemokines or lymphokines called interleukins. Okay, these interleukins now stimulate the differentiation and the proliferation of, of the B lymphocytes. Okay, the activated T helper T2 or the, the activated helper T2 cells. secrete chemokines, okay, called interleukins, okay? And these interleukins now stimulate the differentiation and the proliferation of what? Of B lymphocytes, okay? Or the proliferation of B lymphocytes, especially interleukin-4, okay, interleukin-4, okay? So the next uh, question which I'll give you, uh, write a short note on interleukins. Okay, we have in, uh, you you hear very important one interleukin two, interleukin six, interleukin ten. Okay, so we have write short note on interleukins. Okay, so this is the okay. Uh, Mitipa is, is is judging. So this is question question five. Okay, so the interleukins that are produced by the the activated T2 helper cells now uh, stimulate the differentiation and proliferation of B lymphocytes. Okay, now these B lymphocytes now secrete antibodies called immunoglobulin, immuno what? Immunoglobulins that attack and kill the invading antigens. Okay, okay. Now, in addition to the helper T2 cells are activated by interleukin 1. Okay, the helper T2 cells are activated by what interleukin one that is that is secreted by macrophages. Okay, the helper T2 cells can be activated too by what interleukin one. Remember, I mentioned they could be activated with their contact with APC cells, so they can be also activated by what by interleukin one that is secreted by macrophages. Okay, and B cell differentiation is further stimulated by interleukin six. Okay, remember we said the interleukin. For stimulate B cell differentiation, we have also mentioned again that what interleukin six does the same. Okay, so let's let's really look at immunoglobulins. Okay, we have five main types of immunoglobulins. We have immunoglobulin M, A, G, D, and E. But sometimes I used to use the acronym what GAMD. Okay, immunoglobulin G A M D A. Okay, gamma. Alpha, mu, delta, and epsilon. Okay, so those are the immunoglobulins gamma, alpha, mu, delta, and what? Epsilon. Okay, so each is formed by four polypeptide chains, two heavy, two long heavy chains, and two light chains, and they are joined together by what? By disulfide bridges. Okay, by disulfide. Bridges. Okay. So we have the 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 immunoglobulins. They they protect the body against invading antigens by two ways. First, by direct inactivation of the invader. Direct inactivation of the invader. Okay. And so this occurs by agglutination, precipitation, neutralization. Lysis, okay. So these are the processes by which immunoglobulins destroy the invader. Okay, direct inactivation by inact by agglutination, agglutination, precipitation, neutralization. Lysis, okay, and what? Opsonization. 
which immunoglobulin did we say was medically involved in optimization? Which immunoglobulin did we say was majorly involved in opsonization? So, Ruth, we have gamma, alpha, mu. I know if you, whether you run away from physics, okay, the mu, delta, and epsilon. Okay, beautiful. That's beautiful. Immunoglobulin G, that's wonderful. It means all of you are following, okay? So let's do that. We said the, the immunoglobulins act uh, would act directly by the process we've mentioned in activating the invader, or they can act by activation of the complement system. Can you still remember when we were talking about neutrophils? We said uh, one of the components of the chemoattractants is a, com a component of the complement system. Okay. So the complement system, which please uh, class with us the next. Um, Assignment right on the complement system. Okay, I've given at least they are short, short, but the complement system is not short. And we'll talk about it just now, but then it's bigger than what we are. We we'll structure it, okay? Um, the classical, the so we have um, the complement system is um, it's more, it's a, it's a system of more than 30 specific proteins in plasma, and so these proteins are inactive enzyme precursors which become activated secondary to what antigen antibody reactions okay so when they will have an antigen antibody reactions they some of these proteins are activated by a cascade of reactions okay and this will lead to so many of the processes we've mentioned before opsonization agglutination neutralization lysis activation of by mast cells so uh right short notes on the complement system okay you have the different types of the complement system and you make sure you draw using a hand the 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 casket okay the complement system okay and uh there is there is something i miss on the multiple reminded me of course which she is what I asked you guys to do that I missed out from the assignment. The one that is due on Sunday is a part which I forgot to include. Please make sure you include it in case I forgot I forget to update. It's about the enterohepatic circulation and its uh, clinical relevance. Okay, enterohepatic circulation. Remember, I asked you to draw the hepatobiliary tree. Please draw. Okay, draw. Yes, draw by hand, don't copy and paste, don't cry. No, no, I will not even look at it. Okay. So let's look at the cellular immunity. Okay. The cellular immunity. So this is produced by cytotoxic T cells and is a major defense against viruses, fungi, and a few bacteria like tuberculosis, uh, bacillus, the tubercle bacillus bacterium okay it, the, so the the t cell immunity or the cellular immunity is produced by cytotoxic t lymphocytes and it's a major defense against viruses fungi a few bacteria and against tumors and foreign tissue transplant so when you hear that there was a tissue reject okay that they did a transplantation, there was a rejection, the cytotoxic T cells are rejecting this, uh, this foreign graft, okay? So these lymphocytes directly attack and destroy the antigen-containing cells by inserting what called perforins, by inserting perforins, okay? Okay, by inserting perforins, okay? And then when you will be Looking at the complement system, you understand about these perforins, okay? Oh, they also attack these uh, antigen cells by perforins as well as by releasing certain toxic substances that hasten cell apoptosis. So by inserting perforins and what? Uh, inserting toxic substances that accelerate what? Cell apoptosis. Cell apoptosis. Okay. 
to have mechanism of cell immunity. What is the mechanism of cell immunity? What is the mechanism of cell immunity? Okay. So you have the cytotoxic T cells cannot be activated by direct contact with antigens. Note that, okay, the, the cytotoxic T cells cannot be activated by direct contact with the antigens, okay? So they are activated by the following mechanism. First, antigens are engulfed by the antigen presenting cell, just similar with B lymphocytes. And then in the antigen presenting cells, the peptides or the peptide products of the protein digestion are coupled to the MHC1 protein. Remember, we spoke about the B lymphocyte activation. So they are coupled with the MHC1 protein, and then they are presented on the cell surfaces, okay, on the cell surface, okay? And then the CD8 present on the surface of the cytotoxic lymphocytes, then bind to the MHC1 protein. And so these cells will start attacking the APC cells, okay? So the, the CD8 proteins that are present on the cytotoxic T lymphocytes now bind to the MHC1 protein and then they start attacking the APC cells. Some APC cells also present the MHC2 on their surfaces. Okay, so these cells come in contact with CD4 helper cells. They come in contact with CD4 helper T1 cells. Okay, and then an immune synapse is formed. Okay, and this process activates the helper cells and stimulates the production of interleukins, especially interleukin 2, which further increases the activity of the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Okay, so we have that, and then please, where well, you can go over the, the audio and, and, and look at it. Okay. So the helper 1 T cells are also activated by the interleukin 12, which are secreted by macrophages, okay? And at the same time, the interleukin 2 auto activates helper, T, helper 1 T cells in a positive feedback manner, okay? So we have the antigens that are engulfed by the antigen presenting cells, Okay, and the antigen presenting cells break down these proteins and present their antigens on, on, the, on the MHC1 proteins. And the CD8 glycoprotein molecules that are present on the, the cytotoxic cells now bind to these MH, MHC1 proteins and then begin to attack the APC cells. Okay, then some of the APC cells present the MHC2 on their surfaces. Okay, now what happens is that these cells now come in contact with the CD4 helper 1 cells. Okay, with the CD4 helper 1 T cells. Okay, and then when, when the CD4 helper 1 T cells, they bind, by, they bind to these MHC2 proteins and they form a, an immune synapse. Okay, this leads to the activation of the CD4 helper 1 T cells and stimulates them to produce what? Interleukins, especially interleukin 2, okay, which further increases the activity of the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Okay, and the helper 1 T cells also activate, are also activated by interleukin 12. And so we also have the T suppress the suppressor T cells. Okay, the suppressor T cells are a fourth type of lymphocytes, which uh, help terminate the immune response. They help to suppress the immune response. Okay, they help to suppress the immune response. Uh, they, it has also been mentioned that they help in, they play a role in immune tolerance. Tolerance. Okay, remember we talked about the, the, the immune tolerance, why the body recognizes itself. Okay, why the body recognizes itself. So when there's a failure of this immune tolerance, we may have what autoimmune uh, diseases. Okay. And so we, we talk about briefly uh, about uh, passive immunity. Okay, passive immunity, where you have temporary immunity in an individual against a certain antigen can be achieved by giving him already formed antibodies. Okay, or by introducing 
to this individual are already formed antibodies, or by giving this individual activated lymphocytes from another individual who has been active developed, which, that develops by activating the immune system. So we have natural passive immunity, I have acquired, they have, we have the passive immunity, sorry, we have the passive immunity and have what? The active immunity, okay? So let's, um, let's see. So the next, the, the, I don't know if the last assignment those are short, short, there is a differentiate between passive immunity and active immunity. Okay. And the types, okay? What are the types of passive immunity and active immunity? And then you differentiate between the two. Okay. We just have like 10 or 15 minutes left. And then the, let's look at the role of the helper T lymphocytes in immunity. We've talked about it, and then we'll just bring about it again. Yes, Richard, yes, yes. Yes, the cellular immunity is involved, okay? Against viral infections, okay? But then we cannot really delineate that because we still have antibodies that are produced, okay? It's a, it's a complex mix match, okay? Okay. So we have... Uh, the, the, the helper T cells are the most numerous types of T cells, okay, about 75%. And they are the major regulator of all immune functions, okay, they are the major regulator of all immune functions, okay. And the helper T2 cells activate B cells by interleukin 4 and 6, while the helper T cells, the helper 1 T cells activate themselves as well as the cytotoxic T cells. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have the helper two T cells activate activate the B cells by interleukin four and interleukin six, while the helper one T cells activate themselves as well as what cytotoxic T cells by interleukin two. So they, they auto activate through what? Through interleukin 2. Okay. They auto activate via what? Interleukin 2, because those interleukin 2, the interleukin 2 is produced by what? The helper 1 T cells. Okay. And so the, the helper T cells also release gamma interferon. Okay. The helper 1 T cells also release what? Gamma interferon. Interferons are powerful antiviral chemicals, okay? And so the details of some of these things, the, the, the application and further of it will be seen, or maybe if, I don't know if you do virology, okay? Okay, so, so you have the role of macrophages in immunity, immunity, okay? We've mentioned them, we've mentioned them above, okay? They, they are the main antigen presenting cells, which activate T lymphocytes. They also release interleukins, especially interleukin 1, 6, and 12, which activate both B and T lymphocytes. Then there is what we also call okay, I would, uh, Lucas, I would address that at the end. So have uh, the natural killer cells, okay, these are non-T, non-B lymphocytes, okay. Yeah, they are non T, non B lymphocytes, okay, and they directly attack and destroy malignant cells, viral infected cells, and foreign tissue, foreign tissue transplants. And their, their activity doesn't involve major histocompatibility proteins, okay? So the natural killer cells, okay, what is natural killer cells? Or what the NK cells? They are, they are non T, non B lymphocytes, okay? They are non B, non T lymphocytes, and they directly attack and destroy malignant cells, okay? 
they directly attack and destroy malignant cells. Viral infected malignant cells, of course, those are tumor cells. Viral infected cells, foreign tissue transplants without involvement of what the major histocompatibility proteins. Okay, and they they also produce what gamma interferon. And they, they say the human body has three types of killer cells, okay? And so I, I asked you to write, was it interleukins or what? Cytokines, okay? Interleukins, okay? So convert that question to write a show note on cytokines and, inter, yeah, cytokines, okay? Because lymph interleukins are part of cytokines. Okay, and um, the other parts I would I'll give you to read them. I'll give you to read them. Okay. The other section is just about one or two subheadings that are left. I'll give you to study them. And so uh that we come to the closure of our class. Uh, and one of the things I've learned is that you need to be consistent and determined. I got up this morning, I didn't, I was not feeling well rested. I didn't know I was just coming to, to close the class, not to even lecture. But then I've been able to talk up to this moment. So you've got to be determined, you've got to be determined. Even if when you don't feel like it, that's what it's called, discipline. Discipline, that is the ability to do what you have to do when you have to do it, whether you feel like it or not. Okay? Discipline is the ability to do what you have to do when you have to do it. Whether you feel like doing it or not, you have to do it. And that's what is called consistency. Okay? And so if you've seen people who have been on top form for 30 years in business for 30 years, been making, no, it's not, there is nothing this, they have indoctrinated themselves and they have train themselves to do what they have to do, okay? So that's one of the things you should learn to do, okay? Not how you feel. If it's the way I feel, I was sharing with the classroom yesterday that I'm not sure I will be able to take today's class, okay? I'm not sure I'll be able to take today's class. Feeling, I wasn't sure I'll take today's class, but it's not about feeling. You, when you come to the point where you know that there are people who rely on you, for something, then you can't give up, okay? So you can't, you can't afford to fail in school because what? There are patients in the community, there are people relying on you, okay? There are people relying on you, so you can't afford to fail. So it's, it's people who fail are self-centered. They thought about themselves alone and then they choose to fail. But if you think that people are relying on your success, you wouldn't want to fail, okay? So don't be self-centered. Choose today not to be self-centered. Choose today to be community conscious, to be people conscious. So when you are people conscious, you would you would want to do something. If I was thinking about myself, I can come and say anything I want to say here, make a few noise. Uh, you know, you need to read it. You have to study this. You have to study this. And it's over. But then it doesn't work that way. Okay, you've got to be people conscious, please. You've got to be people conscious. Please, you've got to be. Don't let your guard down. You've got to be people. Don't, don't be self-centered. Think about people first. And that's one of the things I've also come to realize. Not blowing my trumpet, but if I don't do them, they will rust, okay? But then I've come to realize that I, I try to put people first. Learn to put people first. It, it may seem as if it doesn't pay, but it pays. Learn to put people first. Put people first. Put people first. When you put people first, it's a seed you're sowing. People will put you first. Okay? People will put you first. So put people first, please. Don't be self centered. Always think about the other person. Always think about the other person. Always think about the other person. And as you keep doing that, people start thinking about you. You people will have sleepless nights for your sake. People will run, run over mountains for your sake. They'll climb, they'll 
do things for your sake because that's what you do for people. In, and it's not just because you've had to, you've got to show them. It's something that has to be within you first. It has to be, it has to come from you. I'm thinking how to better my students. I'm thinking how to make them different. I'm thinking how to, to be part and parcel of their career and to make, to see that their careers are better. That is what you need to be. And it's not just looking at any kind of material to give my students. It's while, while I'm giving to my students, I'm also praying for my students. It's important, please. And I'm telling you, if you've not been praying for me, then you've not been, you've not, you've not been doing well. I do pray for my students that they become different, that they become, they have a different perspective, perspective, a different test of mind, a different experience. I'll be glad to see one day. Probably maybe I see your time as in, in Harvard performing great surgery, bringing some new, in, some new perspective. Probably maybe seeing Annette or Lindway or Fee or Edward or, or Robert. Okay, you being part and parcel of a, of, of a great team at the international scene. Okay, it's for my good, it's for my good. Okay, so that is important. So, uh, bringing from interacting with you, so we come to the end of uh, blood and body physiology. I'm not sure we'll meet this academic here again. Saturday's parables. When I say meet, I don't, I'm not sure I'll teach you another course this academic year uh, i want to hand over to somebody else to do something and let's let us have a spice of life okay uh, let us have a spice so uh so hopefully we the 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 term two ends today and when term three begins you would uh, dr hamambulu will take you in respiratory physiology and uh, you would you would you would you would greatly enjoy that okay you would enjoy that i can tell you you will enjoy respiratory physiology with him and then in year three we would pick up again okay but he but if he finishes if he finishes uh respiration within 10 three which i think he may I, then i'll come back for something else i'll come back for cardiovascular we, we will rock cardiovascular together okay we would enjoy cardiovascular physiology together so it's gonna be a great time and um Hopefully, somebody asked me when the, the test course will be available. Hopefully, within the shortest time, but actually, before Jesus returns, you have the test course, okay? Yes, before rapture, you get the test course. So it's, uh, so you would, hopefully, but I, I want you to have the test course before 10, three resumes, huh? before we come back from 10, three. And so far, so good. The performance has not been so good uh, in the, in the AC part, in the short AC, so uh, I, I would consider just a, I would likely consider just a multiple choice. I want you to have good scores in, 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 in term one. It will give you courage to study for term two and term three. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I will consider just the multiple choice. Many people tried in the multiple choice. I was impressed with so many, with the good scores in, in multiple choice. Okay. I, I want you to have good scores in tests. One, because the sessioners won't be friendly. Okay, and so you, I don't want you to enter into the sessioners with poor scores, okay? They won't be friendly. And so everything being equal, that was a, it was a great time. I can tell you, I enjoy your class. Your class has exudes, um, irrespective of the few, but then your class is, is you, you're pushful. I just pray that you keep this pushfulness, okay? You, you, I pray that you keep this pushfulness and this this zeal to know. Uh, never be intimidated by the questions you ask. Only just ask them in a polite and and receptive manner. Okay. Only ask them in a polite and receptive manner. Always give room for ignorance, and uh, so uh, be open to new things. Okay. Be open to new things. And so, please, uh, I hope too that there is a material that I, I will be bringing. Or we bring in forth, hopefully, everything being equal. I'm saying it is not always good to uh, count the chicks before they hash, but then I think saying that would also give room for preparation. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a material I'm, 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 I'm bringing forth, it will be it should be coming out in a month's time, hopefully, and it's about uh, it's a compendium of lecture notes question and answers, multiple choice question and answers, and practice questions. Um, short ACEs, practice question and answers. 
case studies and uh, other things or, or the whole of physiology. So it's physiology in a pocket, okay? And so that should be coming out. Everything being equal, I'm still relying on uh, divine, divine ability and divine speed to have this out in a month's time. By saying, by telling you this, I'm committing myself to working within the time. That's why that's the purpose. And so it will be out within that time because without it, I believe many people will have challenges with physiology. So I'm trying to bring out a material that can assist students. And so when that material is brought, please, I would want you to partake of it and, and publicize it as much as possible, okay? So it will be, it will be, what, how much did we say again? Was it somewhere? $10, right? Yes. So it will be $10, okay? Uh, and the, the subscription for that is for a whole acad academic year. And so it's a $10 and will be, the subscription will be whole academic year. $10 will be like a, a 180 quarter, okay? So it has the, it, it will have all the, the notes in physiology, all the notes, okay? all the notes in physiology and that's summarized but then keep maintaining the essentials you we'll also have um, short ace equations which i've already done that part short ace equations with answers for all the systems short ac questions with answers and then questions for you to answer as well, practice. And then I'm also thinking of case studies, that scenario questions. And so all this, as, as I said earlier, physiology in the pocket. And so it would just be $10. I believe I'm dealing within Africa. I compared other materials and I saw that they were $25 a, a month for subscription. I, you know, I think that's way too much for an African student. So it would be $10 for a, an academic year or let me say for yeah for an academic year and uh i hope for it to be used uh, far and wide because the materials i'm using are materials that are being used in nigeria egypt and uganda and of course in zambia now so okay okay uh so that is what will happen. Uh, Tawina, well, you say I'm visibly unwell. I, I didn't recognize that until you said it. <laughs> Am I physically unwell? Eh? Tawina, which, which glass are you using to look at me? <laughs> God forbid, bad thing. But it's okay, thanks for, for, the, for the prayers and I'm preserved and I'm fervent, okay? Probably maybe you are using the, your computer or the device you're using, the screen is cracked. And so you're seeing me differently. <laughs> Tawina is saying I'm looking sick. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 So uh, thank you and uh, I'm grateful. Okay. So please, as you're at home, uh, be, be packaging your $10 and keeping. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. And I'm grateful. Please have a, a nice day. <laughs>